Is that so? Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to give this story to the newspapers. I'll blast your precious reputation to shreds. That's what I'll do. Your thousands of fans will know what you really are. you picked out to play hide and go sick. Wanzo, why aren't you in bed? Wanzo, where are you? Looking for something? I'm looking for Wanzo. Well, I'm right here, Russian. What's the matter? What are you doing out there? I just went out for a smoke. In the middle of the night, you go out for a smoke? You want to wake up the dead? I'm having a nervous breakup. Uh, our bill, please. Checking out so soon? Yes, uh, it's, uh, it's an emergency. I'm sorry, folks, but you can't leave. Well, we were... Huh? Say. Who are you? Mr. Smith, Mr. Jones, this is Sheriff Haywood. Sheriff? Glad to know you. Give the bill, please. We're in a hurry. Make it as it's not. Maybe you didn't understand me. I said you can't leave. Well, now, just a minute. Why can't we leave? Now, uh, see here, Sheriff Haypile. The name is Hayworth, and I said you can't leave. Nobody can leave because there's a dead body been found in room 32. Well, what do you want us to do? Act as pallbearers? <laughs> <laughs> Why should we? We don't even know this body that died. No. <laughs> he didn't die. He was murdered. Well, you see, there's a murder running loose in this place. And he ain't getting away if I can help it. Morning, boys. Don't tell me you're leaving. Well, that was the general idea. Yes, but the idea was vetoed by Sheriff Haystack. I'm sorry, ladies, but for the time being, no one can leave the lodge. But why? What's happened? Oh, nothing much. Only a body was found in room 32. Slightly dead. Murdered. Miss Brown and Miss White, I'm very sorry about all this. Uh, it just can't be helped. What do you mean it can't be helped? We got rights. You can't keep us here. Do you know who we are? Mr. Jonesy, now the law must be obeyed. If the sheriff says we stay, we stay. You've got to get that through your head, Jonesy. Oh, most of course. Just like that. Hiking, I ain't going. Oh, taking a powder rain. Boy, you little... Leave my alone. Leave my alone. Listen, don't blame Jonesy. Jonesy? My dear you, please, let us explain. This oh, is better to go. You have our bags taken back to our room. Yes, Miss Brown. What do you know about these people? Oh, me? Oh, nothing. They just guessed, that's all. And the name is Smith Jones Brown and White, eh? Yes, yes, yes. Holy cat! In 132. <whistles> hey, a little after one o'clock this morning, I was going by that room, and I heard a man's voice in there. A man's voice. The murderer. Might have been the victim. So what did he say? Boy, was he burned up. Yeah, well, well. 
He, he seemed to be threatening to expose somebody in the newspapers. And now I remember it must have been somebody in show business. How do you know that? Well, I heard him. He said, I'll blast your reputation and, and then all your fans will know what you really are. This I don't like. Forget what you heard, understand? Yes, don't breathe it to a soul. Why? What are we afraid of? Oh, nothing. Nothing. We might just as well all be sitting in the death house, that's all. Get this. The other night our program closes. The next day we're all registered here under assumed names. What are we doing here? Attending a clam bake? Oh, no, brother. And then there's my jealous wife. In our contracts, our reputations. And then to top off the whole thing, there has to go and be a murder. Any minute now, we'll all be exposed, disgraced. We've got to get out of here or else. I protest! I protest! Give the dignity I do not propose to tolerate, and I will demand an apology. All right, all right. The sheriff will apologize. Oh, sheriff? Yeah? This is a no thing. Take it easy. What is it, Mac? I'm in the room like you told me watching things when this guy comes through a connecting door and I grab him. Yes, and why do you grab me? And what were you doing in that room? I demand an explanation. Easy now. What were you doing in that room? What was I doing in that room? I have a right to be in that room. I go in there every morning when arising. I'm Mr. Fountain's personal physician. He has a heart condition. I've been with him eight years. He don't go any place without me. That's right, Sheriff. Dr. Colmar has been coming here with Mr. Thornton for years. Now, you see, perhaps you could tell oh, me... Oh, just a minute. You mean to say, when you entered that room just now, that you didn't know your patient was dead? Dead? Yes. In his heart? No, no, it wasn't his heart. He was murdered. Murdered? Horrible, horrible event. And how did it happen? And who would want to kill him? That's what I'm going to find out. All we know now for the present is that between 1 and 6 o'clock this morning, Michael J. Thornton was poisoned. Michael J. Thornton, the big agent. So they finally caught up with him. A glass of water, please. Of course, of course. That's way, Doctor. Mac, I'm going to question every guest and employee in this place. So round them all up and I have them right here ready in this lobby. Okay, Sheriff. All right, folks. Just don't wander off too far. Well, I've never been mixed up in murder before. Exciting, isn't it? <laughs> right now, we'll be welcome here a little dialogue. Russian, you talk too much. So what did I say? What did you say? It's what we all say from now on that's important. If we're not careful, we're going to wind up behind the biggest eight ball you ever saw. Harry's not fooling. This is serious. You mean we're mixed up in this? Up to our necks. Well, what'll we do? I wouldn't say anything about ever having been here with Thornton if I were you. Have a cigarette, anybody? Now listen, kids. The important thing for us is to just remain cool. Remain cool and stick together. Gee, you make it sound pretty awful. Heavens, the way you talk, you'd, you'd think one of us might have done it. Is that so fantastic? The person who was in Thornton's room early this morning, when Ella May heard him threatening to expose somebody in the newspapers, is in show business. Now, is there anyone else here in show business besides us? Harry's right. I'll say he is. Here's another thing. All of us here knew Thornton. Some of us even had dealings with it. Well, yes, I... Uh... And uh, if they ever find out that we're actually well-known radio people using phony names, checking in one day and trying to check out the next, <laughs> they're going to be asking a lot of questions. And we ain't got a very good answer. Even though none of us knew a thing about Thornton's death, we'd be dragged into it. We'd be through in radio. You could use our reputations for a soup strainer. That's why we've just got to stick together. Say, Varze, didn't you once have trouble with Mike Thornton about a contract or something? Well, yes, I did. And didn't you threaten to break his neck uh, or something? I remember it was in the paper. Oh, well, that was a long time ago. That whole thing's been forgotten. 
Me? <laughs> well, I wouldn't hurt a fly. I just went out for a smoke. In the middle of the night, you go out for a smoke? Want to wake up the dead? What are you looking at me that way for? Who's looking? All right. You never know. We're all going to hang together. <gasps> what am I saying? to Mr. Michael J. Thornton. I still want to speak to Mr. Thornton. Now, listen, sir. Think you'd better tell me about what? Well, wait a minute. I'm a newspaper man. I came all the way up here from Los Angeles to get a story. Now, are you satisfied? A reporter, eh? What kind of a story are you supposed to get? Look, Hawkshaw, how do I know? Thornton phoned me last night and told me to be up here today if I wanted a hot story. Mm -hmm. And you came all the way from Los Angeles to get a story just on a phone call. That's right. You see, Thornton happens to be the kind of a guy that dishes out hot stories. I know that. What time did he phone you? Well, after one this morning. Hey, why the third degree? Is Thornton in a jam? Kind of. He's dead. Dead? Yes, he was murdered shortly after he talked to you on the phone. Oh, brother, this is a story. Just a minute, son. There ain't gonna be no story till I find out who killed Thornton. What do you mean? Thornton's been bumped off. That's story enough for me. Yeah, maybe so. Hey, wait a minute. You're interfering with the press. That's too bad. Okay. Well, anyway, I'd better call my editor. Tell him where I am. He'd be worried about me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, Constable, if that's the way you feel about it. I hope you realize you're taking the wrong attitude. Nice meeting you, Inspector. Hey. I'd like to have you stick around for a while. Oh, you're going to hold me here, huh? Anybody can come in. Nobody goes out. Oh, is it okay with you if I breathe? I'll tell you when you can leave. But don't try it before then, because I have some sharpshooting deputies outside. You just make yourself comfortable. This way, fellas. Hi, Sheriff. Hi, boys. Upstairs in the second floor, room 32. I'll send McNeil up to give you a hand. Okay. Oh, Mac. 